Hey everybody, welcome back to DJ Tutorials. This is going to be the next part of a crash course for beginners on Natron. We're going to be adding some compositing effects and some layering over the top of our rendered image that we went over last time. If you haven't yet, please take a moment to like and subscribe to the channel. It really helps me out. And we also have a Discord server as well as a Patreon. So if you feel like uh, given a couple bucks a month, you can also get some digital downloads and some other sort of perks and benefits for doing that. So let's go ahead and jump into Natron here. And I am I already have a uh, file that I've created that shows this stuff. So I'm going to be sort of referencing that. So just so you know, I'm not doing this all up at the top of my head and all that. I kind of have this stuff, you know, pre-planned out. And it will take you guys usually a little bit more time than how I'm showing it to you here inside the program to play with these and to get something that you really like okay so I'm just giving you that warning ahead of time so that you don't think that all of it like I, I'm able to just like come up with the stuff at the top of my head okay so what we're gonna do here is we're gonna add a very simple glow effect over the top of this and what we're gonna do since I have this uh, kind of opened up from last time I'm gonna close down the properties right up here and um, again, for anybody who gets lost or anything and you mess up your display or anything, if you go up here to, to the layout, you can restore your layout back to its default by doing that there. And I use that still sometimes when I get my windows all kind of messed up. So we're going to delete the JPEG and the PNG here that we opened up last time. And I'm also going to delete this color look up here. And we're going to go ahead and add a glow node. So if you hit tab and you type in glow, you'll be able to bring up this glow filter node here. Now, uh, for those of you who haven't done this yet, you can uh, do your rendering in your viewport here by proxy, by clicking this button. And uh, you can choose two or four, or if you have a very high powered computer like myself, you can turn that off um, until you really need it. That basically makes the rendering of all your nodes a little bit easier so your computer doesn't uh, <laughs> have problems while you're trying to render. So let's take this glow here and we're going to pipe it right into this color correct and view through this node. And over here on the right, you're going to see some stuff that we can play with. So let's pull this down a little bit so we get a little bit better view. And over here on the right, we're going to do a couple things to make this easier for us to see what's going on with this glow. Okay, we're going to go down the list here under options and we're going to click on glow only. And this is basically going to show us the glow map. So it's showing us what colors are being pulled. Now, if this is a little bit uh, too difficult for you to you know, pull information from because you've already done your color correct and your grade, you can always take this and put, plug it right into your base color before all the grading. And you can see there it's like really, really bright. And um, you know, if, if that's the kind of thing you want, you could do that. But I'm actually going to try and use this color correct here to create this glow map. So if I click on the glow again uh, and look over here on the right, you can change a bunch of uh, these settings here to do all kinds of different stuff. So if you isolate the, high, the uh, highlights here, it basically grabs the brightest of the color information. So if you just want it coming off the super, super brights, so you can pull this over to the right and kind of like choose the section that you want. Okay, and you can actually pick the color here. We're not going to do that, but you could pick the color. We're just going to try and keep this a little bit more simple. So we'll pull this over so that we grab this area here. And just the brightest of these here, we want to add a bit of a glow effect. Okay, so then right down here where we have the glow effect, you can change the size. So you can make it, you know, really diffused. You can see it's almost, it's like a, a lot more sort of like blurred out. Or we can take the size and make it really small, so it's just a layering over the top that will brighten up those areas. And the ratio here, if we move that, the best thing is just to kind of play with these. It basically just changes some of the values. So you can see here it gets tighter as we pull the ratio down, and it gets a little bit more blurred as we pull it to the right. Iterations basically means how many times it's going to apply the sort of like glow effect over the top. Um, kind of the best way to think about this is if you pull it way down, it's not going to be as visible. And if you pull it way up, it's going to take a lot longer, but you get a lot more of a soft transition in your glow effect. The next thing here, which is, I think, what a lot of people really like, is this stretch. Okay, And if we pull this over to the right, you can see that what it does is it pulls 
the glow effect over, kind of like that anamorphic look that you see a lot in uh, the movies, like The Thing and other 80s films like that. Um, Spielberg likes these types of looks. So you can see that it pulls it way over to the left and right, and you can get these really nice streaks going across your image. And the iterations is going to change that. So if you do like barely any, you can see it's just coming off the, the edges there. And if you pull the iterations all the way to 10, even though it takes longer to render out, you do get a really cool effect. The other thing here, I'm just going to turn off this um, the crosshair here. The other thing you can do here is you can actually rotate this. So if you take this and you pull it over to the right, you can make this really cool sort of like uh, angular dynamic look. So that's kind of cool. The next thing you can do here is under gain, you can pull this up and you can see that it's actually creating more of that visible glow effect over the top there. And if we take the gamma and we pull that up, you can see that it's making it again, even more visible. And if you take the saturation and you pull it up or down, um, you can see that that has an effect on it as well, um, depending on what your image kind of looks like. We're actually going to put this back to zero. So I'm going to right click here and reset to the default. And what's really cool is you can actually change the coloring of this stuff. So if you go here and you change this to a uh, kind of neat sort of like teal effect here, you can get a cool look like that. So that's basically how that works there with the glow, um, with the glow only visible. And if we take this off and we click screen, which will um, make it a little bit easier for the color information. We won't blow out our highlights as much. You can see that now we have this really cool so, sort of like glowing effect that's coming off the top like that. Now, this is not the view I ended up with, or at least the glow effect that I ended up with. I ended up doing a couple other things here. So what I did in the final is I made this a 0 0.586. The size was a 7.3. The ratio was a 3.417. Iterations was 8. Stretch was a 0.984. And the rotation, I didn't do a rotation there. Then for the gain, I actually have a color here. So I'm going to put that in. So I had a 195, 112, 255. And then for this, the gamma here, I actually, I'm going to reset this, right click, reset to default. I just had a value in here, so I had a 1.4470. And I made this a glow only, and there's a reason for this, okay? So you could just have this be your final and be like, great, this is what I want. But what I'm going to do now is I... I like how much this is stretching across the screen, but I actually want to blur it a bit. So what we can do is we can take the glow node and we can send that through a blur and we can change the size here, which will blur it. Let's go back to the glow really quick and I'm going to change this to glow only. And you can see that the blurring effect, if I click on this node here and I hit D, it will actually disable it. And you can look between the two when you keep hitting D you can see that you're basically softening that if you don't like, if you kind of like how it looks, but it's a little bit too harsh as far as the edges that you see, you can throw a blur on top of that. And with the blur, I went with a 36.3. So it looks something like that. Now, the next thing that I did was I wanted to add another glow effect because you can add more than just one glow and it does kind of render quickly compared to the glare node that's inside of Blender or Blender's compositor. So if I take a look here, uh, or if I just add another glow here, another glow node, and what I'm gonna do is I'm actually gonna create another sort of like hookup for the node path here. And if you hold control and you click on one of these little yellow icons that show up, you can actually create one of these right here. It's kind of like a pathing node. And if I take the glow and I throw it right through there, it's basically going to uh, use the same connection here as for this glow. 
but I don't I don't have the uh, pipes here at weird angles, and I don't I don't have them doubled up. So it's a really nice way to organize your node path or your node structures here. So I'm gonna take this glow and I kind of pull it down a little bit, and let's view through just this one. And what I did here is I wanted to add a different sort of glow effect where it's just kind of pulling this area here and making a nice little uh, soft, um, what would be called a fog glow in the Blender glare node. That's kind of what I wanted to do here. So if I click on the glow node here, and again, I'm just gonna copy the information from before, and you can make this however you want it to look. I had this as 0.586, and I'm just gonna type in this stuff here. So 2.02. 2.193, 8, stretch was 0.385, and then I had a color here for the gain, 48, 42, and 255. So a nice little contrasting color there with a, a sort of orange effect. And I'm going to do the glow only so you can see it. And then for the gamma here, I made this 2.2630. So I had a, an effect like this. And then what we want to do is we want to take these two glow nodes and we want to merge them together to make one kind of like uber glow, okay? So let's hit this little X button here to clear these properties. And down here, we're going to hit M or press M. And we're going to merge these together. And what we'll do is we'll take the B slot and we'll put into this blur, hold control, left click and drag this little connector here down here. And what we want is nice organized nodes. We want a nice sort of boxy look. We don't want a bunch of angular stuff all over the place. We wanna be able to easily see where everything is being connected. Okay, and we can even take this blur down a little bit if you want, or just keep it up here. And then for A, we're gonna put that into this glow here and then view through this. Now you might be asking, okay, cool, um, I did that and I don't see anything. And that's because our merge operation isn't quite what we need it to be. We need this to be something different. Over is one mer merge operation that you could use, but what we're gonna do is we're going to change this to plus. And that's basically going to add those two layers together to make one composited layer. So we have a plus operation, that's taking our yellowish glow and our bluish glow and merging those two together. Then what we're going to do is we want to merge this merged plus operation for our glow here to our color corrected original image that's here. And before we do that, we're going to add what's called a backdrop just so that we know what's going on over here when we start to create a huge uh, composite node system. So hit tab, type in backdrop, and it went over here because I had that one selected. But if you hold control and you left click and drag that, you can move it where you need it to go. Grab this little uh, arrow here, move it like this, and hold control again to kind of put it where it, you need it to go. And if you look up here in the properties, we can actually name this. So we're going to call this glow. And I'm going to change the color to a blue like this. So click this little button here and you can change the color. And now we know if we get really lost and we don't know where our glow effects are, we can go right there. So now what we want to do is we want to take our glow effect and put it over the top of our original graded image here. And all we need to do is hit M and then merge A, which will be, uh, which I'm gonna make the over the top of. So A is going to be here. So there's the A connection. And then B, I'm gonna put into the color correct. And let's just look through there. And you can see that we have a problem. And that's because we have this set to over. Again, the merge operations depend on a lot of math. And I'm not gonna go over all of them, but if you do go over to the operation and you hover over these, it will tell you how the operation is done. I'm not gonna explain how it's done because it will take way too long to explain all this. But basically what you could do, if you don't want, if you don't know what, what merge operation to use, you can hover over it and hold shift and down, click down or uh, press down, and you can kind of cycle through all of the different nodes or the different merge operations, I mean, and see which one works for you. 
Now, I know that what we want here is screen because screen is going to be able to put those um, glows over the top and it won't be too harsh as far as blowing out our whites. Now, you could use a plus operation if you want, but if you zoom in really close here, if we see right here, I'm going to show you the difference between the plus and the screen. So if we look there and then we change this to a screen, you can see that it's a lot more normalized as far as the whites or the, the brights and the darks. Okay, so that's why I'm using a screen operation here to make that happen. If you get to this point and you feel like this is a little bit too much, um, there's too much glow going on, you don't really need to affect these here. You can just make sure that the merge uh, node here is in your properties window. So make sure that you've double clicked that or you can click the clear all and then double click just the one. You can take the mix here and pull it down to whatever you want. I actually kind of like that harsh look because it looks really, really cool in my opinion. So that's going to be it for this tutorial. Hopefully you, you were successful in creating a glow effect over the top of this image. Join me next time when we start to add a little bit more effects to this file and create something like what you see here. And I will see you guys next time on DJ Tutorials.